Six Days in Fallujah is the most controversial game of the year, and definitely one of the most controversial games of all time. Little 11 year old me remembers back in 2009 seeing this game on the news and everyone trashing it, saying how offensive it was to make a game about possibly the most violent battle in the Iraq war. Enough people complained and the publisher Konami decided to pull the plug on the project. Eventually the devs at Atomic Games went bankrupt and the game died along with the company. But fast forward to the beginning of 2021 and ex-Halo and Destiny devs at Highwire Games and publisher Victoria announced that the game is coming back and is expected to be released on PC and consoles later this year. With this being the game that it is, soy-infused journalists everywhere see this as the perfect title to trash and bring clicks to their dying opinion piece ass article overlords so that they can stay on life support for just a little bit longer before slipping away to the never-ending void of mediocrity. Kotaku being one of those. Well, there's a lot of controversy over this new video game called Six Days in Fallujah. Critics are calling the game, which is based on one of the deadliest battles in Iraq, too realistic. Tonight we have a closer look at a graphic and violent video war game that is sparking outrage even before it arrives in stores. Instead of featuring a make-believe battle, this game offers a vivid depiction of one of the fiercest battles of the Iraq War, the fight for the city of Fallujah. Now, in a way, I'm grateful for websites like Kotaku. They give me so much to criticize and make fun of how out of touch some of these people are from the real world. I'm not making this video to really talk about the game itself other than this. I understand war is a serious thing, and I also understand that making a World War II game is a lot easier than making a realistic half game, half documentary that the devs are claiming six days to be. The main reason is because World War II happened generations ago, and most, if not all people, see the Nazis as the bad guys, because they were. But this battle happened in 2004, and it was great to say the least. The Iraq War should have never happened, and it was one of the worst things we allowed our American government to do. With that being said, let's take a look at this article. Muslim civil rights group calls for Microsoft, Sony, and Valve to deplatform six days in Fallujah. Written by Mike Falhey, one of the most respected writers in the industry. Calling the controversial first-person shooter that aims to recreate the events of the Second Battle of Fallujah an Arab murder simulator, Muslim civil rights and advocacy group the Council on American-Islamic Relations is requesting that Microsoft, Sony, and Valve avoid hosting or distributing Six Days in Fallujah. Though the developers have said their intention is to represent all sides of the conflict, how do you make a video game like this without glorifying the US war machine? Plenty of people have been questioning questioning the developer and publisher's plans to revive the game. But if they're determined to go ahead, maybe not selling it on the PlayStation Store, Xbox Marketplace, or Steam is a step in the right direction. See, if there's anyone I can trust when it comes to discussing such topics, it's definitely the guy who writes articles about how you can play with Sonic's pretty head. Hey, it's 15 inches. Kotaku Elder, lover of video games, keyboards, toys, snacks, and other unsavory things. <clears throat> oh my god. Atomic Games back in the day described Six Days in Fallujah as a survival horror game. Now Highwire is saying that the game will be a tactical shooter that also shows both sides of the bloody conflict. The game hasn't even come out yet and this man's talking about how do you make a video game like this without glorifying the US war machine? You ever think that maybe, just maybe, the best anti-war game would be a violent war game showing realistically how terrifying and bloody war can actually be. Maybe showing both sides' perspectives of the experience can teach people to understand how dangerous conflicts like this can cause so much death and destruction, while also showing that even the men who go home victorious live the rest of their lives with mental traumas that if not for their own leaders, they would be able to live normal lives. People on all sides should be remembered. And honestly, the only reason I know about this battle in the first place is because of this game. Back in 09, most people heard about it because of the game controversy. And in 2021, most people are learning about it because of the same thing. The fact that people are being educated about a tragedy today because of a video game that's not even released yet is amazing. 
What's that one saying? Those who don't learn about history are doomed to repeat its mistakes? This game could just be another COD ripoff and I'd still support the right of the devs and the publishers to make it because I believe in freedom of speech and freedom of expression. But of course, that's a dying belief system and Kotaku loves them some censorship. Think about it like this, the game got cancelled over 10 years ago and it's still going to get published. It's still being made. They brought it back because so many people, because it got cancelled, wanted to play the game. So two completely different studios just came and revived it. So I think deplatforming this game will have a Streisand effect and it's gonna make more and more people want to play it. But anyways, what do you guys think about all this? Let's talk about it in the comments. And as always, if you like this video, subscribe and leave me a like. Later.